Did you know that between the 15th and 18th centuries, an estimated 40 to 60,000 people were executed for witchcraft in Europe and the American colonies? This dark chapter in human history was driven by widespread fear and paranoia, fueled by superstition, religious fervor, and social upheaval. In the midst of this pandemonium, one figure loomed large, Matthew Hopkins, the infamous Witchfinder General of England. During the height of the witch trials in the 17th century, Hopkins took advantage of the public hysteria, leading witch hunts across the east of England. His methods were brutal, his judgment ruthless. In his brief yet terrifying reign of just three years, Hopkins was responsible for the execution of an estimated 300 women. This chilling figure accounted for about 60% of the total number of people executed for witchcraft in England over a period of 100 years. The chilling reality was that Hopkins' reign of terror was only a fragment of the larger global witch craze. Hopkins, a man of no significant background, managed to instill a reign of terror across the counties of East Anglia. Matthew Hopkins, known as the Witchfinder General, was a master of manipulation and fear. With no legal training, he devised his own methods of identifying and interrogating those he suspected of witchcraft. He employed a variety of techniques, each more cruel and torturous than the last. One such method was the infamous swimming test, where the accused were bound and thrown into water. Innocence was proven if they sank, and guilt confirmed if they floated. A grim choice between drowning or execution. Another method involved pricking the accused with needles, searching for the devil's mark, a spot insensitive to pain. Sleep deprivation was yet another ruthless tactic. Hopkins believed that a lack of sleep would weaken the resolve of the accused, leading them to confess their supposed sins. Hopkins' methods were not just confined to his personal witch hunts. He compiled his techniques and theories into a pamphlet, The Discovery of Witches, which served as a manual for witch hunting, influencing and horrifying generations to come. The reign of the Witchfinder General came to a sudden end in 1647, but his methods and legacy would cross the Atlantic to the New World. The terror Hopkins instigated was not confined to England's shores. His influence would soon reach the colonies, setting the stage for the infamous Salem Witch Trials. Across the ocean, in the American colonies, the witch hysteria took a firm hold in the late 17th century with the infamous Salem Witch Trials. A small village in Massachusetts, Salem was gripped by a frenzy of fear and suspicion after a group of young girls claimed to be possessed by the devil. The girls accused several local women of witchcraft, setting in motion a series of events that would forever mark Salem as a symbol of mass hysteria and injustice. As the accusations spread like wildfire, the trials began. The accused, mostly women, were subjected to harsh interrogations and dubious tests to prove their innocence. One such test was the swimming test, where the accused were bound and thrown into a body of water. It was believed that if they sank, they were innocent but if they floated, they were guilty of witchcraft. In this climate of fear and uncertainty, King James I's book, Demonology, played a significant role. Published in 1597, this book presented a detailed account of witchcraft, demons, and the methods for detecting witches. It was widely read and became a manual of sorts for those conducting the trials. But what drove this mass hysteria? The answer lies in a complex mix of societal pressures, religious extremism, and psychological factors. The Puritan belief system, characterized by a strict moral code and a deep-seated fear of the devil, created a fertile ground for suspicion and fear. At the same time, Salem was a community in transition, grappling with political instability, economic hardships, and the threat of Native American attacks. These stresses, coupled with a deep-seated belief in the supernatural, created an environment ripe for the witch trials. By the end of the trials in 1693, 20 people had been executed for witchcraft, and over 200 others were accused and faced severe social and economic repercussions. In the annals of history, the Salem Witch Trials stand as a stark reminder of the dangers of mass hysteria and the devastating consequences of unfounded accusations. The 17th century marked the peak of the witch trials, but it also signaled their decline. As the century wore on, skepticism and criticism began to overshadow the hysteria. Reason prevailed over superstition, leading to the cessation of these trials. In the centuries that followed, some communities even offered apologies and reparations, attempting to mend the wounds of their past. The witch trials, a chilling chapter in our history, serve as a stark reminder of the power of fear, hysteria, and the devastating consequences of unchecked authority.